the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Hey, I'm Josh Parks. I'm a senior compositor in the VFX industry, and I also run a new composting training website, which is compostingpro.com on the side. Um, so today what I'm going to be doing is actually guiding you through a shot as if you're working in the industry and you've been left the nuke script by another artist or another compositor who's going on holiday. Now very kindly they've left us a to-do list in the actual nuke script for us to work through together. Um, so we'll be working together actually on how to address those shot notes. What I've tried to cover in this tutorial are the ideas and areas that I feel like you need to know about in order to get going very quickly. Unlike other tutorials that you may have watched where you would start from scratch in a blank nuke script, what we're going to be doing is jumping straight into an already set up nuke script and adjusting and adding to it in order to address the notes. Enjoy! So we've got nuke open by actually just double clicking the icon on our desktop or searching for it, uh, the application and opening it up. Um, and this is what you're going to see. Now, your icons down the left-hand side may be different. This is where I've installed some plugins, but overall, it should look like this. Now, we need to open the new script that I provided you guys to actually work on. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Open Comp, and then find the folder that the, you downloaded the new script into. And we're going to click it, and then just open it. It's going to take a little few seconds to load, and here we go. We have our new script. And if I select the bottom merge node, hit a number on my keyboard, we can see what we've got. Now, another really good practice to get into is versioning up. Whenever you open up another person's nuke script or open up your own nuke script, um, it's always a good thing to version up just in case you make a change and actually you prefer the previous version. So we're going to do that now. Uh, what we can do is just go to File, Save As, and in this case, we could call this version 2. Now, you might be wondering why I've got 001 here. And that's because in the industry, what you would do is you have you would daily a version of a shot. And what daily a version of a shot means is you want to show your supervisor um, a version of the shot and get their feedback on it. Now, whenever you were to uh, daily a version or show them a version of your shot, generally what you would do is you'd change this number. And these three numbers here are basically subversions for you. So while you're working up the shot, you might want to kind of do 0, 0, 0, 2, 0, 3 and save this out as, as this. And then when you show the, the director or the supervisor your shot, you're then going to basically just change this number. And then this goes back to one again. So in this case, we have this as our uh, actual version number. So we're going to version up. So we're going to just do VO2 here and then we're good. Now, as you're working along, if you'd like to kind of save a version just in case you mess up, then what you'd want to do is just change this number here. So we do two and then we could do three, etc. So that's how you open up your new script and how you'd version up as you're working through this tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, you're going to be working your way through the notes that were left by the previous compositor down here. Now, if you're ever working on a shot and you'd like to create your own notes at the bottom of your script, the way that I've done this is just hit tab with your cursor in the node graph, write sticky note, hit OK, and then we can type whatever we want. So in this case, we could write to do. And you can see we can't really see it. And that's because if we zoom in, we can see it now. And it's because the font's so small. So all we want to do to make the font bigger is change this number. So I'm going to put 120 in there. I like bold italic. And now you can write your to-do list. So we could put kind of like monster. And then we could say grade up monster. So this is just a handy way. Whenever you want to leave any kind of like to-do list for yourself or any reminders, this can be a really handy way to do it. Cursor in the node graph hit tab, write sticky note, and then you can use this to write it. So throughout this course, we're obviously gonna to need to move around within our node graph. And you're gonna hear me kind of repeat certain hotkeys and things in order to move around this, but what I thought would be useful is just at the start before we jump into working on these on these notes, I would just go through the actual um, hotkeys so you can kind of maybe write them down or start playing around with moving around the node graph with them. Now I'm going to go through um, using a Wacom pen and also using a mouse as well. So these are my Wacom pen settings. So I've got the the bottom uh, button here as middle click and the top as right click. And then if I actually push the Wacom pen down, um, 
it's actually going to just regularly do a left click. So with a Wacom pen, here's your hotkeys. In order to move around, you're going to hold down Alt, and then you're going to just left click, which is basically just pushing the pen down, and that's going to allow us to move around. That's the same in the viewer as well. If you want to zoom in, we hold down Alt and then do the middle mouse button, and that's going to allow us to zoom in and out. So between these, Alt, left click to move around, which again is pushing down on your pen, and then Alt, middle mouse button, or the bottom button in this case, because I've got it set up as the bottom button, it's going to allow us to zoom in. And that's pretty much how you want to move around. So if I do Alt, left click at the top, and Alt, middle mouse button, it's going to zoom in as well. <coughs> the viewer. So there you go. Now, for a mouse, um, it's the same thing. So you're going to do Alt, left click, in order to move around and alt left click as well to move around on your mouse and then the middle mouse button is basically a scroll if you've got one <clears throat> so now i can go in and out and what i'm doing is i'm holding down alt and then moving left and right while holding down the middle mouse button and that's the same up here as well i can do the same thing to zoom in and it's going to zoom in wherever my mouse is so if i do this it's going to zoom in this area if i put my cursor here and hold down the middle mouse it's going to zoom in here one thing you can do on a mouse that you can't do on a Wacom pen is you can just use the scroll to actually just scroll in and out to zoom out as you can see uh, in and out as you can see now be aware in the industry pretty much everyone's going to use a Wacom uh, don't if you do want to buy one don't buy a fancy one just we use uh, Wacom interests the medium ones um, and you can get kind of an old second hand one pretty cheap um, online so most of the time we're going to use Wacom simply because we don't so we don't get kind of repetitive strain injury and also if we're doing uh, any kind of painting and any clone painting and things it's just way easier on a Wacom and um, if you're used to a mouse you're gonna hate it <laughs> for the first week using a Wacom but you do get used to it um, and once you are used to it there's there's no going back so those are the hotkeys we're going to be using a lot in order to move around within our no graph and our viewer Once you've versioned up your new script, what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to reconnect all the read nodes. And the reason why you need to do this is because I've placed this particular file, um, well, each file in a folder on my computer, and now Nuke can't can't find that folder basically because it doesn't exist on, on your computer as well when you've when you've downloaded the files. So all we're gonna to need to do is basically just reconnect these up. So whatever folder you've downloaded the elements into that you downloaded from the Google Drive link. Well, what we need to do is just double click on each read node. So I'll close this, double click this one. We can start from the top and go down. Double click this, hit the little folder icon. And then we're gonna to go to paste this in. We're gonna to go to the folder where I was saving this. And we're gonna just match up this. So this is raw ones, so we're gonna go here. Great, it's that one. And it instantly finds it. We're gonna double click this one. And then this is the monster. So we're going to double click this one, and there's our monster. Then we're going to double click the embers. And let's see if we can find it. Ah, look, this one's in an embers folder. So we've got to find the embers folder. It's in alphabetical order. This one here. Then we're going to double click the fire. And that's in a fire folder. Ooh. This one here. Then we're going to go down. And this one, I believe, is automatically connected. This already connected up. But what you'd need to do is just find this bit of footage. And it's called video playback. And then you'd be good to go. So once you've done that, you should then see each element. And if we go to the bottom of our new script, we're going to select this node here and just hit a number on the keyboard so we can see it. You should then basically see um, the actual image. So always super important to do, once you do that, you're gonna hit Control S just to save your version. So everything is connected up and ready to go. So you've opened up the new script, awesome. And you're gonna be given this and you're gonna be able to see the final shot in your viewer, which is this up here. If you can't see that, no problem at all. Just uh, select by left clicking and dragging down here on the last merge node and hit any number on the top of your keyboard. Obviously you've got one to, uh, to zero, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then zero. Just select the merge node or any node that you want to view and hit the number on top of your keyboard and it's then gonna pop up in your viewer. If you feel like you wanna make this a little bit bigger, just hit H and it's then gonna fill the whole viewer, which is really nice. So now we can see everything we've got. Perfect. Now, first of all, before you start with any 
anything in regards to the changes on this new script, what we're going to do is we're going to backdrop our sections. And all this is doing is not going to change the look or the outcome of the actual new script itself, but we're just going to label each area so that if we have a change to make, um, and as we're working through the notes found down here, then what we can do is very easily find that within the new script. Now, to move around the node graph, and this is basically where you're doing your working out and putting your nodes, and this is the viewer where we're going to be able to actually see the outcome of, of our work. What you need to do is hold down Alt with your cursor in the node graph, and then left click and drag. And you can see what that allows you to do is very easily move around. And we can see the whole new script here. You've obviously got the scroll wheel as well, if you want to zoom in and out as well. So these are the main ways that we're going to be moving around our new script. Now you can see at the bottom we've got our a sticky note with everything we need to do here, which is pretty cool. But first of all, again, we're going to backdrop everything. So let's go through and see what we've got. So I'm going to go into the top here and we're going to hit a number on the keyboard so we can view our original background. Amazing. So you can see that we have our original plate and we're going to click on it and we're going to hit tab on the keyboard. Now, this is a very quick way to bring any nodes you want, basically. So if you want to very quickly bring in a node, what a lot of industry professionals will do is their, node, their cursor will be in the node graph and they hit tab on the keyboard to bring it in. You've also got access to all of the different nodes down here, but I would suggest kind of getting into the habit of hitting tab and typing what you want. Now, in this case, we want to backdrop everything. So we're going to select what we want to backdrop. That would be this read node here. Hit tab and type backdrop. So now what we've got is we've basically got a colored background behind our red in file here, our EXR sequence. So what we want to do is we now want to label this. So we're going to double click on the top, and this is going to open up the properties panels, which is down here, basically on the right hand side, you're going to get your properties panel. Now, if I click any node, it will bring up the properties. So for instance, if I zoom out a little bit and we go uh, here, for instance, and double click a grade node, it will actually pop up the properties panel so we can make those adjustments to that particular node. If we ever want to clear this, because it can sometimes get a bit kind of, you got, we can obviously stack up lots and lots of properties panels for different nodes. If you ever like, look, it's getting a bit confusing, I want to clear this, just click on this up here, this button here with the lines and the X, and it's going to then clear all our properties. So let's move up to the top. And what we're going to do is double click our backdrop node. And we're going to call this uh, BG. Now, this is a little personal preference of mine. We're going to make the text here, just so it's a bit bigger, we're going to put the number 120 in here. That now makes the font 120. And I like to hit bold and italic as well. Now, something else is, it's obviously a bit tricky to see the text here. So I'm just going to bring this down and I'm going to click and drag this to the side, as you can see. And the nice thing about making the text nice and big is if I'm zoomed out like this, so when you're working on kind of bigger new scripts in the industry, it's really nice to be able to kind of zoom out like this and you can still see the text. Whereas if the text was kind of 10, you can see I can't really see it unless I'm really zoomed in. So I personally like 120 bold italic, and then you're good to go. Now, be aware, as you work your way through your kind of Nuke journey in terms of learning uh, Nuke compositing, um, you might kind of pick up different styles from other people. So some people, they label and they actually color certain um, aspects of their Nuke script uh, the same color for every single thing. So for instance, we could, for instance, have a style ourselves that every background uh, we ever get in any shot we work on, we could, for instance, click up here, and this is now going to bring up a color property window, and we can then adjust the color. I believe yours will look like this. If yours looks like this, then you can obviously just drag here. But what we can do is actually just drag out to the side, and now we have access to all of these and we can make final adjustments. And this is actually making changing the color of our backdrop. So there you go. So we've got our background labeled, great. Now something else as well that's quite useful about backdrops is if I click on the backdrop in the top, it will select anything inside it, which can be quite useful. Now, however, we might want to kind of bring the backdrop to the left and have this kind of stay in place. So what we can do is hold down control and click on the top of the backdrop. And now that allows me to move the actual backdrop independently of what's inside it, which is just quite nice for positioning. So great, so we've got our background all backdropped. Let's zoom into this now. So this is our monster render right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select everything to do with the monster, which is everything on this side. 
and we're just going to left click and drag to do that so I'm just left clicking and dragging hop hit tab it's already filled in backdrop but let's just type it in again to get our muscle memory going great we're going to double click the top again and we're going to call this monster again I'm going to make this 120 bold italic I'm going to hold down control to bring this up a little bit higher so we can see the text and if I select the bottom right corner this allows us to just bring this down amazing and we can just view here to see both over the top of each other let's go down a little further so these are our uh, embers as you can see you can see they're kind of flying around so let's select everything to do with the embers hit tab type backdrop double click right embers and again I'm gonna hold down control just so I can reposition these and then we've got our fire here as you can see so these are two bits of fire that are actually on the monster so I would probably go into a little bit of detail as to what this is so I'm gonna call this uh, fire on monster 120 volt italic and you know what as this is fire I'm gonna make it orange so we're gonna click up here now we've got that orange great just bring that out and this is let's have a look at what's happening and we're gonna just turn on and off these nodes so we can see what's happening here by hitting D so if I select these nodes and hit D on the keyboard you can see it's turning on and off what's happening on the side uh, great look our fire is uh, it's the fire on the ground so we're gonna select everything over here hit tab type backdrop fire on ground 120 boulder tonic amazing so now we've basically got everything backdrop that's gonna be a lot easier when we go down here and start working on our notes so what I'd suggest doing is having a play around with that try and backdrop some stuff remember to double click it adjust the text and the size and the bold italic remember you can change the color of the actual backdrop here in this color wheel and you can pick what color you want it I generally use it leave it or whatever it kind of it, it automatically picks but you can totally color color adjust this stuff if you want to and color grade it as you can see so there we go so first of all you always want to make sure your new scripts nice and neat and you're laying things out and backdropping things that's the most important thing because this allows you to work quicker and if you suddenly get a last minute note from the client let's say hey look I want you to make the fire on the ground brighter you know exactly in your new script where that is so we've now labeled everything now we can go ahead and start working on our notes now whenever you're setting up your own nuke script in order to make your own shot or actually picking up someone else's shot in the industry it's always worth just making sure that they've set the frame range correctly now most companies in the industry will actually have uh, tools and ways of doing this automatically for you which is super handy so you don't have to worry too much about this but as you're learning nuke currently what you're going to need to do is set this stuff yourself now I can tell that the artist who previously worked on this shot hasn't set this shot correctly simply because we've got frame 1 to 100 in our viewer Whereas actually we want this shot to be frame 1 to 56. That's how long the shot's going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our cursor to the right hand side and actually set our project settings. So in order to access our project settings, cursor to the right and hit S on the keyboard. That will now bring up our project settings menu as you can see. Now what we can do is we can say, okay, this is going to be 56 frames long, this project. And you can see the viewer snaps to, whatever, to the actual frame range of our shot. And what we can also do is set our project size and our project format. The reason why it's important to set this is because certain nodes will try and be clever and actually automatically set to this project size. And if you're not 100% sure why this is important, well, imagine you were laying um, a big bit of paper on top of a small bit of paper. What happens is that nothing's going to line up when you line those two bits of paper up. What you want when you're working in Nuke is you want the bits of paper to always be the same size that you're stacking on top of each other. So we always need to be careful to make sure that our format and all of our elements that we're merging over and we'll come into how to fix this in a second when we have some issues. But what we actually need to do is to make sure that everything is exactly the same size as our original background. And the reason why we want to do that is because this was obviously shot on set. So this is the size of our actual uh, footage. So we need to match everything to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to view our original footage. And you can see here it says 
HD 1080. And you can see these are the dimensions. It's 1920 across and 1080 pixels up. So we need to set that here. So we're going to click in the full size format. And most of the kind of standard ones are already listed here um, for you by the foundry. If you're working on a project that's got quite a unique format, then you're going to see these kind of access to these, these down here. But for now, we can just set this to HD 1080. Amazing. So again, certain nodes, for instance, I'll give you an example of this, the rotor node, which we'll talk about um, a little bit later in the future tutorials. If I view this, it will automatically set itself to our project settings. So if I were to change this now, it's obviously going to change the format, which isn't very good because now our bits of paper aren't going to line up when we merge them over each other. So HD 1080, and then we're good to go. So super important that you're setting those project settings correctly. In this case, it's frame 1 to 56 and HD 1080. And remember, whenever you're working on your own projects yourself, always view, view the uh, red-in footage and have a look at what format it should be set to. So now we've labeled everything and set our project settings up correctly. Now we can get to the fun bit. No one's learning Nuke because they want to be able to backdrop everything and set project settings, right? You want to do some fun, creative stuff. So let's have a look and pick our first um, to do on here. So it's reduce the defocus on the monster. So let's have a go and actually doing that. So what we can do is we're going to view the merge node at the bottom by click and dragging and selecting it and hit a number on the keyboard. And you can see that, yeah, if I zoom in here and I'm using the cur the wheel on my mouse in order to zoom in, then what we can see is we've actually got this. It does look a bit too defocused compared to the background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up and adjust that. So let's have a look and we're going to zoom out in our node graph by using the scroll wheel to zoom out. And you can see we've got this monster backdrop here, so it must be happening in there the defocus on the monster. So let's zoom in a little bit. And let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got some grade and nodes and saturation node. These are going to be changing the color of the monster. We have a pre molt which is doing some cutting out. We have a transform node. And if you want to know what a node's doing, by the way, just select it and hit D on the keyboard to disable it. You can see, oh look, the transform node is moving the monster. And then we've got this defocus node. So let's turn this on and off. Ah, look, that node when it's enabled, so I'm going to hit D on the keyboard, you can see it's actually doing the defocus. So when I turn it off, it's looking sharper. And when I've got it on, it's obviously defocusing. So let's go down again and double check the note. So I'm going to hold down Alt and left click to move down. And then use the scroll wheel to zoom in. Reduce defocus on monster. So we need to reduce this number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in at the bottom and hit a number on the keyboard view the final output and hit H with our cursor in the viewer in order to fill the whole screen up with our actual image and zoom in a little bit. Now let's reduce this number until it feels right and close in terms of focus levels to what's next to it. So let's bring this down and you can see our monster. If we go crazy, look, oh, it's crazy to focus. Let's bring it down, 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 down. Now, actually for me, I don't think it needs any defocus at all, right? Like I'm, I'm putting that at zero, and I think that's, I mean, that looks way closer than it was before. So actually, I don't think we need this node. Now, it doesn't make sense to keep this node in if it's not doing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to the top. So I'm going to scroll out to zoom out of my node graph. Hold down Alt, left click, drag up to the top, and then scroll in again. And we can just delete this node. So we're going to select it and hit delete on the keyboard. There we go, it's deleted. And that's our first note addressed. We've now reduced the defocus on the monster and now we can move on to the next one. So we've made our bright embers brighter and warmer. So let's just double click our sticky note. Select here on the right hand side and left click and drag it down. And we're gonna, right, done, because we've done this one. And then we've done this one as well. So next up is brighter glow on the embers. Okay, so we know we're going to be working in this area where our embers are again, because it's another embers note. So let's have a look at that. So where's our glow? So we know these two here are grading the color of the embers. The transfer node, let's turn it on and off. Ah, 
they're moving the embers into place and what's happening so that then goes to the side and that's being put over the top as you can see and then what have we got then we've got the grade and then we've got ah look we've got a glow node here and you can see that what's happening is we're the artist is merging over the embers and then they've got this other kind of just the glow separate here and then they're plussing that over the top so why are they doing that why are they splitting these two things out why are they why don't they just delete this and then have it so that you've got the embers well the reason why is because it's very good practice to split things out as a, a composter because if you split things out now what can happen is you can grade your glow separate from your embers so where you can you always want to keep things fairly separate and a good comp will always want things split out as much as possible just so we can mess with everything basically uh, if the client ever wants to change something because it's split out it's a lot easier for us to change so if you're ever going to add glow to anything what you'd want to do is merge over the original thing and then just connect in a glow node in this case it's a weird node which we'll talk about in a second because it doesn't look like it's kind of a standard nuke node have your glow separate and then plus that over afterwards now you can see that this node is um, a little bit weird x bond glow one now if i hit tab and write glow on the keyboard hmm, we don't actually have a the nuke standard node is this but and all the other glows i've got here are plugins that i've got so what's going on well people actually make their own tools in nuke um, and share them Sometimes what you get is a compositor's made a tool for a particular show to get a look that the show wanted. And they might actually share those tools with other people on the internet. And if you're wanting to have a look at those tools, uh, there's a great website called Nukepedia. And this is where you can find kind of a whole bunch of tools that people have made. If you go into the downloads um, and the gizmos here, you can download a whole bunch of tools that people have made. While starting out, I would suggest kind of not using too many um, different custom tools, but it's super interesting to do and you can see how people uh, work and what tools they've created for their shows. So this is a really great website to sign up to. It's absolutely free and you can start downloading and have a look at people's tools. In this place, we're going to use this glow node. And the reason why we're going to use our own exponential glow node or our own custom glow node is because if I hit tab on the keyboard and write glow, and I'm just going to demonstrate basically how this is different to Nuke's Glow Node. What we've got here is we have our brightness and our glow that we can adjust. And that looks okay, but it doesn't feel very natural. Um, so a lot of the time you'll, you'll be using exponential glow nodes in the industry. So I'm going to bring this over to the side and have a look at this. And if I play around with these values, we should basically start getting a really nice glow effect, as you can see. And it just feels a lot more natural on the fall off. Whereas if I have a look over here at this one, it just the fall off just doesn't feel very natural, right? Whereas this is nice and natural in regards to the fall off. So that's basically why we use an exponential glow node most of the time, these nukes glow node. And now you have this tool in this nuke script for you to play around with. So what was the note? Let's have a quick look. So it was brighter glow on the embers. So we've got two options to make the glow brighter. We could double click it to go into the properties panel and up the intensity amount, as you can see, and that's gonna make the glow brighter. Or what we could do again is we could split those out so that we kind of do this note underneath. So I'm gonna click on the exponential glow node, hit G on the keyboard to make a grade. And how do we adjust the brightness? Well, it's the gain or the multiply. Either one, absolutely fine. They do exactly the same thing. Don't worry too much about why they do that, but. That's what they do. So we're just going to multiply up. And remember, if we put the number two in the multiply, it's going to double the brightness. So it's very hard for us to make a decision on if this looks good or not. So let's go over here where it's being merged over and hit any number on top of your keyboard to view it. Great. Wow, that's a bit too much. So let's just up the brightness slightly. I think that looks a bit tasteful. Maybe a bit too much like this. And now let's see what we've done. So I'm going to click on our grade node that we're adjusting and hit D on the keyboard to turn it on and off. And you can see the difference. So this is before we had done anything. Now we're just bringing the brightness up. Great. So we've now changed the exponential glow node and just brought up the brightness slightly and hit that other note. So let's go down to our list. Clear our properties panel because it's getting a bit messy and double click it again. Bring this down. All right, done. 
So there we go. That's another to do off the list. Now, let's move on to our next note. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this sticky note. And we can just bring this down so that we can see all of that. If we just click on the right hand side, we can bring this down. And we're just going to, what I generally would do when I've done the note, I'm going to do a brackets and just write done and then close brackets so we can keep track of everything. So next up, we need to grade the embers slightly brighter. It's these embers here that are coming out. We are going to make the glow slightly brighter. And then we're going to make the embers slightly warmer. And I'll talk about what warmer means in a second. So let's go up and find our embers. Ah, there we go. That's the backdrop for the embers. So let's zoom in. And what do we need to do? Well, we need to make these embers slightly brighter. So to do that, what I'm going to do is, well, we have two options. Let's bring this down so we have a bit more room. We have two options. What we could do, let's close our, clear up our properties panel, is we could double click on the grade node and we could adjust the brightness in here. And we could totally do that and that would be okay. And to do that, if you ever want to adjust the brightness of something, you want to use the gain or the multiply. These two do exactly the same thing. For now, I'm just going to use the gain. So let's put the number 20 in there. So we're just going to click and drag over the number 8 and do 20. And now you can see our embers have got brighter. And that's okay. Now, the downside of doing what I've just done is what if the client changes their mind and they say, hey, look, you know what? I actually prefer the previous version, uh, what you had before. And now you've got to go and find what the number was in this node before uh, you sent, sent that version to the client. Well, a better way in my mind, um, when you're doing client notes, is if you feel like they might want to change their mind at some point, which clients can do, then I would actually put a grade node underneath and we can stack these up. So what I'm going to do is rather than adjusting this, I'm going to just clear our properties panel by clicking up here. And I'm going to make another grade node in order to do this operation. I'm making our embers brighter. So we're going to click, left click on the grade 19. And the hot key for a grade node is G on the keyboard. That will automatically make a grade node. And because I've selected by clicking on the grade 19, it's yellow so we know it's selected, if we hit G on the keyboard, it will automatically connect this up for us. As you can see, we've got this operation where the arrows are going down and everything's connected in. If you click G on the keyboard without selecting the node, it will just make a grade node to the side that isn't connected to anything. If you do want to connect this grade node to anything, so in this case, we'd want to connect into here, you would click and drag this into here. And then you now need to make the output go somewhere. So we could click and drag the top of this arrow into here. Dragging the bottom of the arrow won't allow you to do it, so you want to drag the top of the arrow, as you can see. And we're now going to put that into place. Now, so G on the keyboard is the hotkey to make grade nodes, and grade nodes are what you're going to use to change the color of something, make it brighter, make it more contrasty. But also, if you did want to make a grade node, you could hit tab again, as we did with the backdrop, and write the word grade, and then click, and there's your grade node. So those are your two options. G on the keyboard is the hotkey, or you can hit tab and type grade on the in the tab option. Now remember, your cursor has to be in the node graph, which is this area here, in order for these to work. So the note was make the actual embers brighter. So let's double click that new grade node we've made. And we're going to bring the multiply up. If we want to make them twice as bright, we just put the number two in here. And you have a couple of options. You can either write the number two, so we can just select here and click two on the keyboard. Or you've got a nice slider here that you can adjust as well. So if you prefer to kind of do a little slider and kind of see how you're feeling and you don't know the exact value, that's absolutely fine. Then you can just use this. Now, if I bring this all the way to the right, you can see that the number it hits is four. And that's as far right as I can go in this. You can go way higher than that. I could write the number 20 in here and it's going to do 20. You can see they go very crazy. So let's bring that down. And the note is... Let's just zoom out. Note is grade embers slightly brighter. So what even is the word slightly, right? Like now it's now it's tricky. And this is your job as a compositor. You've got to interpret what they mean by slightly. So slightly probably isn't this because that's a bit crazy. So let's do whatever you, whatever you think looks cool. Go for it. So I'm just going to bring this up slightly and something like that starts looking kind of cool. Awesome. Now let's have a look at the second note so the other note is grade the embers up ah, actually you know what? i'm going to jump to the bottom one which is slightly warmer on the embers 
So what do they mean by slightly warmer? Well, what they mean by slightly warmer is just a little bit more orange. If you ever get a note from the client that says make this slightly cooler, then you want to put a little bit of blue in there. If you get a note that says make it a bit warmer, we want to put a bit more orange in there. So how do we put a bit more orange in these embers? Because if I drag this left and right, well, I, I'm not adding color, I'm making it brighter, and none of these look like a color. Well, that's where this color wheel comes in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold down control, and I'm gonna left click on this color wheel. And it's gonna pop up with this. And this is what we're using to change our backdrops color as well. Now, generally you wanna get quite precise with this stuff. So what I would do is if you go to the corner, any side, left or right, and drag out, it's gonna give you way more room. And then also you wanna hit this TMI button as well. So we're just gonna left click on the TMI and bring this down. Now the reason why I like hitting the TMI button is because this TMI is one way of adjusting color. HSV is another way of adjusting color and RGB is another way of adjusting color. So what I mean by that, if you're confused, if I drip, bring this up to the right, you can see all this stuff's changing. Instantly this pops to red and it's putting more orange and purple in, as you can see. If I adjust these ones, this starts changing. So these are just three different ways of, of grading. The reason why most industry professionals quite like TMI is because if you want to add orange into your embers, it's very hard for you to do that with these because, okay, I've got a red, green and blue slider, but no orange slider. And here it's a little bit tricky. I'd have to go to the orange here and then bring this up. But here it's really easy. All I've got to do is bring this to the left and you can see they get slightly warmer, which is amazing. And you can see as well, if you left click on the color wheel, we can actually just adjust these, the color here if you want as well. This isn't the best way of working over here because it's just not very kind of finessed. Um, so a lot of the time what you'll see is people working up here mostly. So we've got orange and blue. We've got more purple, uh, more magenta, sorry, and more green. And then this is your brightness. Now we've already set our brightness, so we just want to keep this at one. And what we're gonna do is just put a bit more orange. Let's zero these out again. Put a little bit more orange in there. That starts looking quite nice. I might even put a touch of magenta as well. So that's how we're gonna change the color of anything. If you wanted to change the color of the monster, let's just quickly go ahead and have a go at doing that as well, just to make sure you understand. So I'm gonna again zoom out, Alt, left click, drag to move around, zoom in. We're just gonna hit G on the keyboard. So select this grade 24 and hit G on the keyboard. So we want the hour grade node to happen underneath that. Control, left click on this color wheel, and we could go to town on the monster if we want to. As you can see, so we can make the monster green, whatever color we want. So have a play around with that as well. Have a play around with color grading a whole bunch of stuff like the monster and, and all, all, all sorts of things. I mean, for, that wasn't a note that we had. We didn't need to change the color of the monster, but have a play around to make sure you're understanding it. If, by the way, um, you're doing a grade and you can't see what you're, you're working on. So for instance, what if I was doing this and I'm like, oh, I can't even see the embers. What the hell's going on? Well, what we need to do is just find the embers in our nuke script. So they're here. Select where they're being plussed over. So this is the bottom I could, here. And then we're gonna hit a number on the keyboard to view that. There we go. So always make sure you're viewing at least where you're merging over. So you can see this is where the embers are merged over. I could also, by the way, I could go all the way to the bottom of my script and view here. And that's gonna show everything. It's gonna show the fire on the ground and the fire on the monster and the embers as well. If I view here though, it's only showing from this point up. And you can actually see that because look, the yellow line goes all the way up and this is what it's, this is what we're actually seeing. Whereas you can see these are all now kind of like turned off. So you can actually see exactly what you're gonna be seeing. And it's all of this stuff up here. So there you go. So, so far what we've done is we've hit two more notes in our embers, which were make them brighter and a little warmer. Now, next up on our list, fire on ground. Let's start on that. Let's have a look where it is. So it's here. Um, and first we've got to adjust the position so it's at the bottom of the monster's feet. So, ah, I can't see the fire on the ground. So let's view the bottom of the new script. Ah, here it is. Okay. So they want us to adjust the position so it's at the bottom of the feet. So let's just zoom in. 
I'm guessing that's the transfer node because the transfer node is basically used to position this. So let's double click it. Zoom a little bit in our viewer. And as we double click the transfer node, you can see we've got this little crosshair. This is basically what we can use to click and drag. So if I do this, it's basically going to allow us to position this as much as we want, as you can see. Now, you can also, this is a way nicer way, by the way, of, of moving this fire. But you could also, if you knew that you wanted to move it 10 pixels up, you could just write 256 in here. And that's going to move it. Well, sorry, this is an X, so this is going to be left and right. And Y is going to be up and down. But you can also adjust these values as well if you feel the need. Personally, I would generally use this. Unless you want to make small adjustments, then this crosshair is absolutely fine. If we want to adjust the scale, so for me that feels a bit too big. So we've kind of got it underneath the monster's feet now, but it still feels a bit too big. So let's scale it down. So again, what we can do is we've obviously got this slider here that we can use to slide it down. Um, and then we can just position in, or we could just put a number in there. Um, so I could put 0 0.09. And that looks pretty good. So we just position that at the bottom of the feet. Let's have a playthrough and see how that looks. So let's go to the very bottom of our script and hit the play button. We've got our embers going. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that feels pretty good. Maybe it's a bit too big. So let's double click on the trans node again. Put a smaller number in here. It starts feeling pretty good and play through and have a watch. And it's important that you do watch your shots through as you're working on them. Super, super important. Because you need to make sure what you're doing is actually correct and has achieved the goal that you want. Now, as you've found, I'm having to zoom in here. Um, so I'm having to kind of like zoom in with my scroll, which is a bit annoying. So if we want to make this full screen our viewer, put your cursor in the viewer and then hit space bar. And that's going to make it full screen. And then we can hit the letter H to again fill the whole screen and now we're going to be able to fill our whole screen with the shot which is super important and we've got our embers coming out we've got our fire and we've got our fire at the bottom there as well underneath the feet so that looks pretty good now the little orange here it just means it's caching so it's just remembering those frames and what it's done and just let that play through it shouldn't take too long and once it's done the initial caching, so those frames have gone orange, it's just going to be way quicker on playback. It's going to go to the front now. Perfect. So there you go. There's our fire at the bottom. That looks pretty good. So in order to go back to our setup that we had before in Nuke, where we could see our node graph and our properties panel, just cursor in the viewer again and hit spacebar, and we're good. Now, something I noticed is it's an MP4. Now, Nuke hates MOVs and MP4s and anything like that. It wants frame ranges, basically. So it wants an image sequence where frame one is an image and frame two is an image and frame three is an image. So what I would do, um, if ever you've got any footage of a MOV or anything, it's always good to basically convert it to an image sequence. So what I'm going to do is actually show you how to do that. So bring in your video footage and hit W on the keyboard with your cursor over just to the side, hit W, it's gonna make a right node. We could also hit tab and make a right node as well. And we're gonna connect it in to our original video, as you can see. And if we double click on the right node, if it doesn't have anything here, just double click it and it's gonna bring up the properties panel. We need to basically pick a location on where we're gonna render this out as an image sequence. So we're gonna hit the folder and I'm gonna go back and I'm going to click this new folder button. And over here, what we're going to do is we're just going to write fire uh, image underscore sequence. OK. So now we're inside that folder. Now we need to name what we want our image sequence to be called. So we could call this uh, fire image sequence. And then we're going to put a dot. Full stop. And now what you want to do is it now needs to know how you want to basically have the frame numbers displayed. So what you're going to do is hit this hash a few times. Now, if we do four hashes, what that's going to do is it's going to give you four numbers. So for instance, now we could go up in the thousands, two thousands, three thousands in terms of frame range because we've got four hashes so we can have four numbers after each other. In this case, we're only going to need up to 56. So we could actually just have two because now it only needs to go up to two values, which is going to be 55 and 6, right? So we're good with that. Then we just hit dot. 
And now what we need to do, now we've made, we've named our image sequence. We've given it how many kind of numbers we need in our frame range. And now what we need to do is set what kind of file that we're going to actually be rendering. And in this case, we're going to be creating an EXR. So we're going to write EXR and then save. If you wanted to render a MOV out of Nuke, you could just put MOV here. And if you have QuickTime installed, it will then fill this with and give you uh, all your nice kind of properties and what, what kind of compression and things. But in this case, we want an EXR. And the reason why I want an EXR is because it's basically a lossless format. So every time you render a MOV or something like that, it's basically compressing, compressing, compressing all your information and trying to squash and squash and squash it so you're losing detail. Whereas in EXR, you're not going to be losing detail when you render this out. So what we're now going to do, now we've picked our location, we've named it, we've told it how many numbers in our frame range and put EXR here, we're just going to hit render. And now we want to set our frame range. So we're going to do one, render frame one to 56 and hit OK. And then it's going to go through and basically render those into your folder that you chose. So our fire render has finished. So let's bring this back in. So if we want to read in an image sequence or any footage at all, all you have to do is hit R on the keyboard and that's going to bring up our read uh, panel here and we can go and find the footage that we want. In this case, I rendered it in fire image sequence and here we go. And now you can see we've got the name that we gave this image sequence and it says 1-56 and those are the frame ranges. Now if you can't see this and your panel looks more like this, if I untick this button, it basically lists out each image separately as you can see. So each frame is just an image. Now Nuke's super smart, so if we can click this, now it's going to allow us to bring in all of those images as one complete sequence. So all I'm going to do is click that and hit open and there we go. So once again, if you want to read in anything, Cursor in the node graph, R on the keyboard, find what you want to bring in, click it, open, and there we go. Now we have our fire image sequence. Let's just check it. So I'm going to select it and hit a number on top of the keyboard and play through. Yep, that looks pretty good. Great. So now what we can do is, you know, you might think actually that you don't need this anymore and you want to delete it. But that would be the wrong thing to do because what if we need to go back and actually, oh no, we need more frames from that fire footage that we've got here. So what we're going to do is click on the reformat node and bring it down. Connect this in like this. Select all of these nodes by left clicking and dragging and bringing these down. And put in the right node just above. And all I'm going to do is select both of these and hit D on the keyboard. Because we don't need these to be calculating anymore. We're not, we don't need them. Uh, but we do want to keep them here in case we need to change anything. And in Nuke, we always work down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have the right node kind of... This is the original footage. Here's our right node. Then we have the image sequence that was created by this. Super, super neat. So now we've got that set up. Let's just have a quick view to make sure it's all still looking good. Yep. Okay, that looks exactly the same. Perfect. And let's have a look at our next note. So we've done this one and we've scaled it down as well. So next is bring up bright areas, um, desaturate so it's slightly less warm, match fire on top of a monster, so match close to this color I'm guessing, and then slightly less bright. So let's have a go at doing that. So where's our fire on the ground? Let's give ourselves a bit of room. So we're just going to select all of this and bring this down. Now, you might be wondering what the reformat node is doing here. Um, what the reformat node does is it changes the size of this. If I view the original footage and just scroll out a little bit, you can see this is HD 720. So it's a different size to our footage, right? Because our footage is 1080. So the problem is if you don't reformat this footage and make it 1080 and the reformat node basically is just going to scale up or scale down the footage and make it the correct, correct actual size, the format, well, it's going to cause a whole bunch of issues. So as much as you can, whenever you're bringing new footage, just make sure that it's always the correct format. And if it isn't, throw in a reformat node and it will automatically change the scale and the format of the actual image that you're bringing in to the project settings, which in this case is HD. Super important.
Now what we're gonna do is let's have a go at desaturating it, I think was one of the notes. Let's have a look, yep, desaturate. So to do that, there isn't a node called desaturation, um, but there is a node called saturation, which we can use. So let's click on the reformat, hit tab, type saturation. And let's just zoom in a little bit. And let's just have a play, let's go up. Whoa, now it's getting more saturated. And all saturation is, is it just means kind of colorful. So it's getting more and more colorful, super intense color. If we wanna make this less colorful or less saturated, then we just bring this down a little bit. Now, I think the note was to match to up here, so we could probably just bring this down slightly until it starts feeling like it's matching. This kind of feels way too orange compared to here, so let's bring the slider down until it starts kind of matching the top there. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So that one's done. What else we got? Bring up the bright areas. Hmm, okay, we'll come to that in a bit. Slightly less bright overall. Okay, so we need to make it slightly less bright, so how do we do that? Well, we need a grade node. So let's click on the saturation and hit G on the keyboard to make a grade. And remember, if you want to make it less bright, multiply down. If you want to make it more bright, multiply up. So let's just make it a tiny little bit less saturated, uh, sorry, less bright by bringing that multiply down a little bit. And then we need to bring up the bright areas. Hmm, how do I bring up the bright areas? Well, if I adjust the multiply, it's going to bring up everything. So how do I bring up just the bright areas? Well, I need to select the bright areas somehow, right? I need to somehow select the bright areas so that I can just change just those bits. So how do we do that? Well, there's a node called a luminance keyer. And what this is gonna do is gonna make a selection based on how bright parts of the image are. And if you wanna bring in this, this luma keyer, all you do is hit tab and write keyer. And then just click on the top. So there we go. And we're going to collect it, connect in this to our reformat node, like this. Now it's a bit annoying because I've got these kind of like sideways lines, and I like to keep everything nice and neat. So if you hold down Control, click on this little, little yellow dot, and bring it up, and then snap to a right angle, as you can see. So now what this is doing is it's making a selection based on how bright things are. But how do I see that selection? Well. That's where it's gonna put the selection in a thing called the alpha channel. An alpha channel is basically your selection channel. So we're gonna hit A on the keyboard with our cursor in the viewer. <clears throat> and now everything goes black and white and that's because this is our alpha channel. And we're basically gonna click and drag the A. And now you can see it's basically just selecting these areas. If I wanted to make it a bit cruncher, I could bring this side as well, which is the B. So you can play around with these and then just let the area we want to brighten up. Let's pick this area. So now we've got that selection in our alpha channel. How do I use it? Well, let's make another grade node. So I'm gonna select this and hit G on the keyboard to make another grade node. And you might have been wondering what this kind of arrow is from the side. Well, this is a mask. So at the moment, if I view the grade four by selecting and hitting a number on our keyboard, if by the way, you do this and we can't see anything, it's because we're still viewing the alpha. So we need to view our color channels, and to do that, you can hit either red twice, green twice, or blue twice. And what red twice, or green twice, or blue twice means is basically R twice on your keyboard, G twice on your keyboard, and or B twice on your keyboard. So if ever you're viewing the alpha and you wanna go back to viewing the color, just hit R twice, and there's your color. If you wanna snap back to viewing the alpha, your selection again, hit A on the keyboard. So what we're gonna do is we've now got our selection, but we actually need to use this now. So at the moment when I've been adjusting this multiply, it's grading everything. So this little arrow here is the mask, so let's connect that in. And now you can see it's only grading the areas that we've selected in our luminance here. And again, we could make this brighter if we wanted to, but it's very hard for us to know how bright to make this without actually seeing it in our final shot. So let's go down here. Select this and hit a number on the keyboard to view it. Okay, now look, if I turn this on and off by hitting D on the keyboard, you can see it's brought up those bright areas. Now, how bright do we want them to look? Well, we probably need them kind of similar in brightness to these embers, right? Because they're all kind of fiery. They should kind of be in a similar world in terms of brightness. Now, if you're having a tough time checking to see if these are the same, well, we've got this slider over here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna adjust our viewer and just expose everything down and make it a bit darker. And this will allow you 
to be able to easily kind of see exactly how bright to make it. So maybe just a touch brighter. So let's put the number five in there, maybe even the number six, just to kind of match them. And it's a lot easier to match stuff like this than in our regular viewer. So let's bring this down a lot, help match it. And it's just a visual re reference in order to match it. Yep, that feels kind of about right. And now in order to snap back to our original viewer, we're just gonna hit this here. And there we go. Now, now I'm back in the actual original viewer. I think that does feel a bit too bright. So let's bring this number down. I'm gonna write the number four in there. And that feels pretty good. That feels about right. So this is basically how, if you wanted just to select the brightest parts of an image and grade them, this is how you could do it. You could use a luminance key by hitting tab on the keyboard and writing key, selecting in, connecting in to the thing you want to uh, select the luminance of, and then adjusting these sliders, as you can see. So there we go. We've now just adjusted another, well, ticked off another to do. So let's go here and it was less bright, we made it less bright. And then we bring up bright areas, we've done that as well. So let's do done here. Oh, and we've also desaturated it and we matched it to the top so we can write down here. Great, so we're working our way through this list. Nicely done. So the final notes we've got to do here are time offset the screen right fire on monster. So it's different to the screen left one. So anything, well, this is screen right, this is screen left. So this is your screen left fire and this is your screen right fire. Um, and then what's this one? Brighter on screen right fire on monster. So I go a bit brighter on this one. Okay, we can do that. So what I'm gonna do is just double check you're viewing the bottom of your nuke script. So just select here and hit a number on the keyboard to view it. Hit H with our cursor up here so we can see this. And there's our shot, perfect. So let's jump into the first one. So time offset screen right fire monster so it's different to the left. What the hell does that mean? Well, if you look, what we've got here, so if I view here <clears throat> and just disable these, you can see that this is our right fire and this is our left fire. And this is the cool thing about node-based compositors and node-based packages in general. We can actually use the same bit of footage. So we've got this bit of fire footage here um, and we're actually using it in two different places because you can see, look, we've got this over here and that's the left side and then we've got the right side as well, but it's connected to the same, same out input. Now, the problem with that is obviously because it's the same input, they're both moving exactly the same. So you can see, look, they match exactly. So what we need to do is we just want to adjust the timing on the right one so that it doesn't match. So how do we do that? Well, underneath our reformat node, I'm gonna select it for our screen right one, which is this one. And we're gonna hit tab and type time offset, enter. And now remember that's automatically gonna connect it up. If you do write time offset and it doesn't connect, just connect it in like this. And now what we can do is just view that. So click it, hit a number on the keyboard. And if I write the number, uh, let's put minus 10 in here. What it's gonna do is it's gonna shift everything back 10 frames. So now frame 10 is now frame one. And it's just brought everything back by 10 frames. So let's just disable this. And you can see it's basically shifting everything back. Uh, you can write a number in here um, of what you want. In this case, we've got quite a lot of fire um, actually in our input, so we can really play around with this. And you can see now these are gonna be different. So let's view here. And you can see now they don't match. If I turn this on and off, that matched. Now it doesn't. We've got we've time offsetted our footage. So this is particularly useful, by the way, for muzzle flashes. Because if you think about it, the footage you've got, the muzzle flash might start on frame one, but you may want the muzzle flash to be on frame 20. So what you would do is you'd use a time offset node in order to adjust when that muzzle flash was actually happening. And you could just put the number in here basically and adjust your start or end frame. And you can have minus numbers in here and you can have positive numbers as well. It depends what, what kind of offset you want to do. So now you can see the fire doesn't match up anymore. Great. And then we just need to make it a bit brighter. So let's put a grade node underneath here. So we're gonna select the bottom grade node and hit G on the keyboard. And then all I'm gonna do is bring the multiply up just to make this a bit brighter. And remember, we wanna match it in again. So what I'd probably do is that trick I did before, where I'd bring down this, just so I can check. 
So let's make it about as bright as these. Click this. So we go back to our original view. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Now, actually, this one feels a bit odd as well now because it doesn't feel as bright. So let's do the same up here. So we're going to give ourselves a bit of room. Hit G on the keyboard. Click on the saturation. Hit G on the keyboard because we want to connect the gray node in underneath and then bring the multiply up. Okay, and we're going to expose down. Bring this up a little bit. Cool. Now that feels like those are in the same world. And we're good. So let's go down. Oh, let's clear our properties panel. Double click on our sticky note. Bring this down. Done. And done. So now we've done all the notes that we had to do. Let's view our final shot. So we're going to view the bottom, select here, number on the keyboard. Cursor in the viewer, hit space to make it full screen. And then cursor in the viewer again, hit H to fill everything up. And then we can just go to the play button here and play this through. And once you're happy with it, let's just, well, let's play it through and see if we are happy with it. If we are, then what we can do is we're then going to render this out so that we can send it back to the client again. So again, it's just going to calculate through. And I'd really suggest, by the way, like if you want to play around and just be creative and make the fire blue and green, like really go to town on it. The whole point of this is that you practice and have fun while doing it. So the more you can play around, the better. Try adding your own stock footage in here as well, with the fire and the embers and things. And a good place to find stock footage for free in terms of the fire is on kind of like YouTube. If you just search for fire fire uh, stop footage on YouTube, you'll be able to find a whole bunch of stuff. But then just remember to render out any MOVs and MP4s as EXR sequences the way that I've shown you today, and you should be good to go. So let's play this through. It's almost there. So maybe this is a bit too bright, but I think that's okay. Cool, that looks pretty good to me. Nice. So if you're happy with your outcome as well, then let's just stop the viewer from playing. Space on the keyboard to go back to our original setup. And we've got this right node at the bottom, so we just need to render this out. So we're gonna double click here, and just like we did before, hit the folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a folder called uh, Final Output. Now it's up to you what you want to do here. You could render this out as an EXR sequence, but if you feel, feel like you want to render it out as a MOV so you can watch it um, on QuickTime or on your phone or on, and put it on YouTube or something, then we can do that as well. Uh, so we could do uh, final output underscore VO2. So this would be the second version. And then we're going to put dot MOV. And it's going to fill this in. We could then set our compression here again by the way this is only going to come up if you've got quicktime installed on your computer if it's not make sure you've got quicktime installed you can select your compression and then your frame range as well so this is 24 frames a second and then just hit render and it's now going to render your mov double check this should be frame 1 to 56 yeah okay and now it's going to render that mov in your chosen folder